Welcome to Oatman, Arizona, a little town really in the middle of nowhere on Route 66 with a rich mining history as well as a bit of a story of a woman who actually never even stepped foot here that the town is named after. We're going to explore this little town today, which is kind of a tourist trap, but hey, it's fun, right? Come along with me. The history of Oatman goes back to the 1860s, when prospectors bartered with Native Americans in the area so that, in return, they would take them to where gold was in the area. The area has been inhabited ever since, going through several name changes including Vivian and Snowball, named after local mines. In 1908, the town was transitioning into being known as Oatman, named after Olive Oatman, a woman whose story is quite remarkable but yet has nothing to do with this town or this immediate area at all. In 1909, the post office officially changed the name of the town to Oatman. Olive Oatman, along with her younger sister Mary Ann, were taken captive by natives near Yuma, Arizona in 1851, following a brutal massacre of the rest of their family as they were traveling west to California. Mary Ann would die of starvation during her captivity as a famine was affecting the region. Olive was only 14 at the time. She was eventually sold to the Mojaves, at which point her chin was tattooed in their native fashion, a symbol used not for slaves, but for those that are a part of the tribe. Olive's brother Lorenzo, who was believed dead during the attack, but actually lived, made efforts to retrieve his sisters. Eventually, with the help of the military, Olive was discovered living with the Mojaves and returned to Fort Yuma five years later. Although the Mojaves were from the area surrounding Oatman, it is doubtable that Olive Oatman actually ever saw the town named after her, especially since it was named after her posthumously. Today, Olive's name and picture can be found throughout the town, keeping her story alive well over 100 years later. By the 19-teens, Oatman was beginning to surge in population, with over 10,000 people living in mining camps surrounding the town. The town would continue to thrive well into the 1930s as gold and other minerals were mined, with hundreds of miles of mining tunnels in the mountains and under the ground remaining there still today, although the majority are sealed off. Through the years, over 1.8 million ounces of gold have been sourced here. For over a decade, it was the largest producer of gold in the American West. The mother lode was never found, which leads many to believe that there are still significant amounts of gold in the mountains of Oatman. In 1942, the last of the gold mines here was closed, deemed unessential to the war effort. Mines would later reopen in the area, including some still operating, but on a much, much smaller scale. Route 66 literally runs through the middle of the town, and for a while, the town survived as a stop along this famous route that was the first major east-west road in America. However, due to the installation of the interstate that bypassed the difficult mountains around Oatman, Oatman would nearly die off. It was eventually revived with the intent to make it into a tourist town, showing people what the town was like years ago. Today, Oatman has a population of barely over 100 people, just a glimmer of the population it once had. But the town arguably has more life now than ever, as thousands of people visit the town every year to see this neat little place. Many of the buildings that you see in Oatman today are not original, as a fire burned down much of the center of town in 1921, but they are buildings that were constructed immediately after. The Oatman Hotel, however, was spared from the fire and is the oldest two-story building in Mojave County, built in 1902. The Oatman Hotel no longer offers rooms for the night, but you can go up the grand staircase to see one of their rooms, which is preserved in time as the room where actors Clark Gable and Carol Lombard honeymoon following their wedding in nearby Kingman. That claim is disputed though, as records show that they actually went straight to California following their marriage. Still, the myth lives on, and apparently so do ghosts. It is rumored that a drunken Irish miner that lived in the hotel, Odie as he is called, still wanders around the upstairs playing his bagpipes. It is also rumored that a chambermaid haunts some of the rooms. Fact or fiction? I don't know. However, I do know that today the hotel offers hot meals and cold drinks, one of the only places in town to do so, and a good meal it was. I had the pulled pork sandwich, which comes with homemade potato chips and coleslaw. The walls of the restaurant are covered in $1 bills, signed by restaurant patrons. Every day, the main street is stopped to traffic as a history lesson of the town is told, followed by a comedic staged Wild West shootout. Ah! 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 
Do you see that? Yeah, you're going to get it again until you don't cut it out. Uh, is he dead? Yeah. Perhaps one of the most famous things about Oatman today is that the descendants of the pack animals used in the mines now wander wild throughout the area. Burrows, or wild donkeys, wander around everywhere both in town and in the mountains outside the town. Driving into Oatman, you need to be careful, as they are often found just standing in the middle of the road and commonly completely stop road traffic. Even the mayor of Oatman is a donkey, Walter an orphan donkey that lives at the home of his adopted family. However, most of the donkeys you see walking around are completely free-roaming wild animals. You can buy hay cubes from vendors in Oatman to feed to these animals that are literally everywhere you go, including on the sidewalks. So, you will quite literally bump into one, probably many times, during your visit to the town. There are some interesting museum-like places to explore in town, including a mine entrance that dead ends into a wall, a tiny little saloon, displays on the history of the town, and the Oldman Jail, which has a total of two cells and includes displays and items from Oldman's past. Many vendors sell unique goods all along the main drag, including minerals, rocks, clothing, jewelry, and numerous items related to the donkeys of Oatman. Since running water and indoor plumbing is scarce here, there is a public restroom on the far end of town that is a shared service made available for the benefit of the entire town. I love this little town. This was not my first time visiting Oatman, and I very much doubt that it will be my last. If you're in the area, it is a fun way to spend an afternoon walking around and enjoying the unique atmosphere here that without becoming the tourist draw that it is, likely would have become just another ghost town. There is a totally laid back atmosphere here that is unlike most of the touristy places found elsewhere. One of the main reasons that I prefer these rural road trips over city visits. We'll see you next time somewhere else down the road.